Hey, what's going on everybody? Today I'm going to show you how to do pick the lock with Sprite Kit using Swift with Xcode. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so first thing I'm going to do is open up Xcode 6. Now I am using Xcode 6, although Xcode 7 is out. I am downloading Xcode 7 at the moment. So in this, I hope to demonstrate the differences between Swift and Swift 2. Now I also did program this in the Xcode 7 beta, so you should be good if you're following along in Xcode 7 or Xcode 6. If there are any changes, I'll be sure to address that in part two of this tutorial. Let's go over here, create a new Xcode project, and this will be a game. Click next, our product name, I'm just going to call this Picker Lock. You can of course call this whatever you want. Our language will be set to Swift and our game technology will be Sprite Kit and our devices will be universal. Click next and create. Now let's go ahead and make this a bit bigger, and let's go ahead and create our characters. So I use Pixelmator to create my characters, but you can use uh, whatever you want. Let's say create new image. I'm going to make the image a 1000 by 1000 image. This will be the circle that you see on the game, so 1000 by 1000. Click OK. Then I'm going to take an ellip ellipse shape. I'm not going to go through too many of the steps to create graphics. You can of course do that all by yourself, and you'll figure out how to do it. So now I have my circle right here. Like so, I'm going to change the stroke to bigger like that, and that should be good, and then I'm going to also delete the fill. Now let's go ahead, delete the background, and I'm going to say file, export, and this will be a PNG. A PNG, I'm just going to export this as my circle. You can of course call this whatever you want. Now let's go ahead and say file, new, and this will be our person. So the width of this person will be equal to 200, and the height of it will be equal to 50. Now you can make these shapes bigger or smaller if you want. We actually programmically changed the size of them, so it's okay. So right over here we have this person. I'm just going to click and drag a rounded rectangular shape right onto it, like so. And then I'm going to delete the stroke color, add the fill color, and I'm going to delete the background layer that I have created. I'm going to say File, Export, and I also want to make sure that this is a PNG or else you will get the white background. Now let's go ahead and say Next and export this as our person. The naming of these files are pretty important as you actually use them in the programming itself. Now let's go ahead, take these two images that we created and just drag them into our project file. Now inside of this project file, you can go ahead and I'm just gonna head over to my project and minimize that. So now inside of my project right here, I'm going to go over to my images.xc assets, as you can see right here. And right inside of this, I'm just going to take these two images and put that right inside of there. So now we have our circle and our person inside of our images.xc assets. Now let's head over to our game scene.swift and inside of this I'm just going to delete everything that's inside of my did move to view and also everything that's inside of my touches began. Now first thing we want to do in this case is create our people. So in this case I'm going to say var circle. We're going to make this equal to an sk sprite node open parentheses close parentheses. Then I'm also going to go down here and I'm going to say var person will be equal to an sk sprite node open parentheses close parentheses as well. Now inside of the did move to view this is where I'm going to set up the circle and the person for real. And so I'm going to say if circle will be equal to and I'm going to make this equal to our sk sprite node open parentheses and this will be an image named open quotation mark close quotation mark and this will be our circle image that we created inside of our images.xc assets. Now we also need to set the size so I'm going to say circle dot size will be equal to a cg size open parentheses. I'm going to give this a width of 300 and a height of 300, like so. Now we need to set the position of our circle, so I'm going to say circle.position will be equal to a CG point, and then open parentheses, and our X value will be equal to a CG rect get mid X, and essentially we're grabbing the center X value from our self.frame, which essentially is just our view. So now we are grabbing the X value perfectly, and then we can also go into our Y value and say CG rect get mid Y, like so. And this we're going to type in self.frame. So now we have it perfectly centered on our scene. And then after this, I'm going to add it to the scene, so I'm going to say self.add child circle, like so. Now if we were to build and run this, so as you can see we have the circle in the center like so, and now let's go ahead and add the person. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to say person will be equal to an sk sprite node open parentheses and this will be an image named open quotation mark close quotation mark and this will be our person. Close that off and I'm also going to say person dot size and we're going to make this equal to a cg size 
open parentheses, with a width of 40 and a height of 7. You can, of course, change this to whatever you want. Now let's go down here. I'm going to set the position of it. So I'm going to say person.position will be equal to a CG point, open parentheses, and this will be an X value of our self.frame.width divided by 2. And then down here, our Y value will be our self.frame.height divided by 2 as well. And now let's add this onto our scene. So I'm gonna say self.addChild, and this will be adding the child of our person. Now let's build and run. And as you will see, we have it perfectly positioned in the center of our scene, but we want it right up here. So in order to do this, let's head over to our Y value. And right after this divided by two, we're just gonna say plus 112. Now you can of course adjust this number. I will probably adjust the number if it's wrong, but plus 112, and that should get it somewhere on the center there. Now let's go ahead and rotate this before we adjust any further. So I'm gonna say person.z rotation. We're gonna make this equal to 3.14, or essentially we use radians inside of programming. So 3.14 divided by two would be equal to a 90 degree angle. So we're gonna say 3.14 divided by two and build and run. And now we have this like so. Now you can of course change this, so this will, let's say this is 122, and that's pretty much perfectly positioned. I'm gonna bring it down slightly more. And now we have that perfectly positioned on our scene, so let's head back over here to our project, and now we want this person to follow a path around that circle. Now there are other ways to use this, but I prefer the way of using a UI Bezier path. So let's go right up here, I'm gonna say var path will be equal to a UI Bezier path, open parentheses, close parentheses, like so. And now to make this person follow this path, let's head over to our touches began. And right inside of here, we first want to create a variable. So let's go up here to the top here. I'm going to say var game started. We're going to make this equal to a bool value, like so. So now we can tell whether the game has started or not. So if the touches begin when the game hasn't started, we can say if the game started is equal equal to false, so the game has not started, so this is the first time we're pressing it, then we want to first do this. And then after this, we can say else if the game started is equal equal to true, then we can run this other stuff. Now what do we want to happen as if the game started is equal equal to false? Great question. We're gonna go right down here and create a new function. This function will be called move clockwise, open parentheses, close parentheses. So it's going to move clockwise if this function is called. Open curly bracket, close curly bracket. Now we also need to create a sunken function in, in the which that it will move counterclockwise. So we're gonna just call this function move counterclockwise, like so. Now what do we want to happen when it moves clockwise? So let's head back over to our project real quick and I'm just gonna try explaining this. Now if you're familiar with, with trigonometry, in order to calculate the position of our person, we need to get the dx value or the delta x value and the delta y value. And then we need to divide the delta y value divided by the delta x value. So this all really makes sense once we put it into practice, but essentially this dy divided by dx is going to give us the radian at which the person is already on the circle. So let's head back over to our project right now and let's go over to the move clockwise. So we're gonna say var dx or the delta x will be equal to, and we're gonna make this equal to our person.position.x minus our self.frame.width divided by two. For our dy value, we're going to set this equal to var, and I'm just going to copy and paste our dx. So our var dy value will be equal to var dy for our person.position.y minus our self.frame.height, like so, divided by 2. So now we have all of this working, and right down here we're going to calculate the radian at which it is on the circle right down around here. So we're going to say var radian will be equal to, and we're going to make this equal to an a tan, so essentially arc tan, and we're going to arc tan these two variables that we have. These two variables will be dy and dx. Now you want to make sure that they're in the specific order of dy first and dy, dx next, or else you're going to get some funky things going on. Now let's go ahead and create a path according to where this person is positioned. So we can say var path will be equal to, and we're gonna make this equal to a UI Bezier path, open parentheses, and this will be an arc center. Our arc center will be equal to a CG point. So just type in CG point, open parentheses. Our X value will be equal to our self.frame.width divided by two. 
and our y value will be our self dot frame dot height divided by two. So now we are taking, so essentially we just put the center in the middle right here and then we're going to build a circle around it. So now let's go over to the radius. Now the radius should be equal to 120. Now I'm putting 120 because that is where our person dot position y value is. So we're essentially creating a circle right around where our y value for a person is. Now we can go down here, we're going to say our start angle will be equal to our rad, or the radian that we created. And then our end angle will be equal to rad, rad, or the radian, plus a CG float value for our pi. So I'm going to say CG float m underscore pi. And then we're going to multiply that by 4 so that we can get a complete circle. Now I did try this with 3.14 times 2, which essentially would you think would do the same thing, but this is the only way that I've found that actually creates it in a perfect way. So we can say radian plus CG flow m underscore pi times 4. Clockwise, we're going to set this equal to true. So it's basically going to create this path in a clockwise direction. It really doesn't matter how that is done. Now let's make some person follow this path. So I'm going to say let follow and then we're going to make this equal to an sk action dot follow path and you want to make sure that you did the one with path offset orient to path and you could do the one where it says time but i like speed a little bit better now for the path that we follow and actually this should be not a var path we're actually just editing the path that we created up here so our path will be equal to a ui bezier path like so so right down here we're going to say let follow equal sk action dot follow path and we're going to follow the path that we just created dot cg path so our core graphics path that is created via that path that we created hope that made sense <laughs> As offset, we're going to set this equal to false. We don't want the person to be where the path originates from. Orient path, we'll set this equal to true, as we want it to turn as it's going around the circle. And our speed, we're going to set this equal to 200. Of course, you can change this to whatever you want. Now let's go down here, and I'm just going to say person dot run action. This will be an sk action dot repeat action forever. So we're going to pre repeat this action that we just created, follow forever. And now this function right now is actually not being called. So let's head over to our touches began. I'm just going to type this right into our game started equals equals false. So just say move clockwise. And now if we were to be able to run this, you can press on the screen and it automatically moves counterclockwise. So yeah, if you want this to actually properly follow it in a clockwise direction, you need to go down here to person dot run action. And right after repeat action forever, you need to go down here and just say dot reverse action or reversed action so let's build and run this and now it's going to be the exact reverse of that action that we just created so now it's going to move in a clockwise direction now we need to move this in a counterclockwise direction as well so let's just go ahead and copy everything that we have inside of our move clockwise and just paste that right inside of our move counterclockwise direction and then all we need to change is person dot run action and then just delete this part right there now one thing we need to do right now is to tell whether it's moving clockwise. So let's go up here and I'm going to create a new variable. So right up here I'm going to say var moving clock clockwise. I'm going to make this equal to a bool value, open parentheses, close parentheses. So this will allow us to tell whether it's moving clockwise or not. So right up here inside of the game started, we can see that it is moving clockwise. So alongside inside of this game started equals equals false, we want to say moving clockwise and we're going to set this equal to true so it is moving clockwise now if the game has started we already know that it is moving clockwise so we're going to go right inside of here and we're going to say if moving clockwise is equal equal to true then we want to run this stuff in here so if it's moving clockwise then we want to reverse the direction and say move counterclockwise and we also want to say moving clockwise and we're going to set this equal to false and now we want to do the exact opposite that we just did there and just say else if our moving clockwise is equal equal to false, open curly bracket, close curly bracket, then inside of this we can say move clockwise. So now it's going to move clockwise if it's already moving counterclockwise. Then we're going to say moving clockwise and we're going to set this equal to true. We also forgot to add right inside of this first else if statement inside of our touches began, we want to say game started, and we're going to set this equal to true. So the game has started, so now we want to focus on this else if statement down here. Now let's build and run this. 
And now we can click on the scene, it starts clockwise, then we can click again and it goes in the opposite direction like so. And you can just keep on going. Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, be sure to hit that like button down below. And if you want to see more tutorials like this for me in the future, be sure to subscribe. If you want to support the channel even further, you can head over to patreon.com slash But either way, thanks again, and I will see you in the next one.